I'm Kristen, also known as Volenvine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And I hope wherever you are in the world, as always, that you're staying safe, you're well, and hanging in there. It is yet another week of staying home. I hopefully have a fun show for you this week. I've got some knitting to chat about, sewing to chat about, lots of sewing plans, so grab a cup of something and let's let's get into it. Uh, but first, just a couple of announcements. We have our history make-along, which is a year-long make-along in which we are endeavoring to make anything historical. So anything prior to the 1950s, it can be historically accurate, it can be historically inspired, uh, you can knit, you can sew, you can crochet, you can weave, whatever your craft is, you're welcome to join. And to participate, you can head on over to the Wool and Vine Ravelry group, which is generally the place to be if you want to partake in said make-alongs or just join the chatter surrounding this YouTube channel. So, all right, I think that is it for announcements. That said, I am going to move along to what is on my needles. All right, update on the Husbeast sweater. <laughs> I am making so much progress on this my friends uh, here again is the back I'm done knitting the back of the sweater and again this is the cane sweater a pattern by Martin Story who designed the sweater for Rowan yarns I believe is it Rowan pattern company Rowan yarns I don't know Rowan let's just say Rowan here is the back uh, and I am ready to start decreasing for the sleeves on the front so yes and, and I dropped some stitches, so let's let's go rescue those before... And why I am mid-row, I have no idea. It's, it's stuck in it. Why didn't I just finish the row? <sighs> the world may never know. The only thing different about the front is probably just the shaping of the armholes. Uh, it, it is, again, just a very simple, plain raglan sleeve, bottom up, um, pullover sweater. Nothing exciting to write home about, really. It's a very simple shape. I'm enjoying the process of knitting it. Uh, the yarn, again, is Rowan Felted Tweed, the yarn that the pattern actually calls for. It's uh, a DK weight, tweedy, charcoal color, but in certain lights, as I mentioned in every episode, it looks, it looks a little bit blue. It has a little bit of blue, um, a little bit of blue undertones to it, if that makes any sense. So while it's nothing significant to write home about, I am making significant headway on this project. And by George, I think Dennis is going to get a sweater come summer. It's not summer yet, is it? No, it's not summer. I don't know. Again, time. Time doesn't exist anymore for me. I don't even know if it's spring, summer. What is my life? Anyway, here is the, here is the cane sweater uh, by Martin Story. And I will admit I did take a break on it this week only because I, I, I will say my knitting mojo is making a comeback. I felt the need to cast on something completely new and shiny and, and that is what I did. And yes, I know I have more projects that still need to be completed. I think I have like two sweaters on the needles. I don't know. I'm looking over in my closet where I have all my whips that need to be completed, but in these crazy times, I just need all the new and shiny, and I'm sure you can relate. So, I don't know. I will admit I was in kind of like a, a funk on Saturday. I just knew that I needed to cast something on. I just didn't know what. I knew it needed to be something autopilot, something that wasn't too involved, and <laughs> finally settled on the Nurtured Sweater by Andrea Mowry. Uh, this is something that I really wasn't considering casting on until, I don't know, I just kind of looked at it, and I was like, this is something that I could use in my wardrobe. And I immediately thought of some Gilead yarn that I actually purchased to knit a Jennifer Steingast pullover. I think it was the Fern feather Fan and Fern pullover. I will pop a photo of it in the sidebar so you know what I'm talking about. But instead, I decided to use this yarn to cast on the Nurtured sweater. Uh, so yeah, I am almost done knitting sleeve one. I mean, lately I've just been knitting with black yarn, so why even bother showing it off on the podcast? I don't know. There you go. I think... I think you can get a general idea of what the um, the texture looks like. And I'm surprised. It's actually a really fun and intuitive uh, slip stitch pattern. Uh, and I will say, though, it's not completely autopilot. Every couple of moments or so, I just have to look down and make sure I didn't knit a slip stitch or slip a, a purl stitch, if that makes any sense. But for the most part, it's very intuitive, very relaxing, and 
I'm enjoying it. And you're probably wondering why she has you start with the sleeve, and I was wondering that too. It's actually pretty genius because the sweater itself is knit in the round, so um, if you were to swatch, you should cast on a swatch in the round, knit it, and then block it, and then measure it. Uh, so when you cast on the sleeve, the sleeve actually acts as the swatch. So when you, you know, knit a little bit, and then you block it, and then you measure it, and it all works out, you can just continue on knitting your sleeve. Um, however, <laughs> true to form, I'm not swatching. I'm just going with it. Um, because again, it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any real shaping. It's supposed to have a little bit of positive ease. So I'm just trusting that my gauge is, you know, ballpark where it should be. But anyway, if you are if you are um, a swatcher and want to make sure that you get gauge, uh, that, that's this is a really, really um, efficient way to do that. So I thought it was pretty genius. I'm pretty sure she's not the first to have you start with the sleeve, but anyway, it was a new experience for me, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and the other thing is, I got to whip out my Chiao Gu shorty needles. Uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but these are circular interchangeable needles with a very short circumference, shorter than your average um, 16 uh, 16 inch circulars that are generally used for hats. So in the past when I've knit sleeves, uh, I generally I do magic loop, um, which, you know, is fine, but at the same time I've noticed that, you know, when I talk about knitting sleeves in the past, um, I talk about how sometimes the shaping is like sausage casing on my arms and I don't get gauge. Yeah, that's because when you're knitting the body in the round uh, on a circular needle uh, and not doing magic loop, you have a specific gauge, but then when you switch to magic loop, suddenly for some reason, for me personally, my gauge changes a l changes up a little bit. So that was a little bit of an issue for me, and I think I had to switch to DPNs for a while, which I am not a, a big fan of. Uh, so these, I was really curious about uh, these shorties, and I took took the plunge. I invested in them, and you guys, I love them. Every knitter is different. We all have our favorite tools of the trade, and uh, it's always cool to find, it, find a new tool that works for you. And these, these definitely work for me. So anyway, if you do have the chance to take them for a whirl, I highly recommend them. Not endorsed, just a fan. Um, but I will link to them below if you want to, you know, scope them out on Amazon for yourself. Anyway, I am going to move along to sewing. All right, you might have noticed an elephant sitting in the room. Hello, that's me. But yes, I am wearing a finished object, so I shall stand up so you can see it. And of course, yes, it is black. Again, why do I bother with video for this? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm gonna try and get some reflection from this light right here. Uh, this is a pattern by Very Easy Vogue. It's just a very simple fit and flare dress with princess seams and these glorious, glorious puffed sleeves and Oh, you guys, I am so in love with this dress. I'm just gonna live in this all summer, don't mind me. So the sleeves have a bit of elastic in it, and I will say I'm not a huge fan of um, elastic for the most part, but since these are on the sleeves and when I wear them and I roll the sleeves up, the poof kind of covers the the elastic. But even when I wear the sleeves down like this, it's I still really like the effect. It's just, you know... <sighs> I, I'm here for the puff sleeve. And uh, while I lined the bodice with uh, black fabric, I did not line the sleeve, so there it is a little bit transparent, so giving me some proper ventilation when the weather gets warmer. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, and I will post a photo here so you can see what the full dress looks like. It is a, I wanna say midi skirt. It falls a little bit below my knee line, which I love, um, and it's, it's completely lined. And I did have some fitting issues with it. I did make a muslin. The muslin completely lied or or I actually did not um, do the muslin correctly because when you make a muslin, you're supposed to um, make it as if you are making the real deal. And I did not do that. I took a shortcut. I just whipped it together, tried it on with, a, you know, no, no lining, no nothing. And uh, you know, I paid the consequences. You live and you learn. And I will say the other issue with my muslin is that the fabric wasn't um, similar to this fabric, to the main fabric that I used for the finished object, um, which is actually, I thought it was like a, a cotton gauze, but it's actually a lawn. And I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it's, it has this really interesting plaid texture to it. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting, really lovely, and I'm I'm a huge fan of it. So when I finished sewing this dress and then tried it on, I realized I had some serious fitting issues. The first being that the back was had some serious gaping happen happening. So you can kind of see it's still doing that, but 
when I, you know my shoulders are down, it's it's fine. It it falls flat against my back, and we are we are good. Uh, however, before I made some alterations, it was just flopping open in the back, and I had some a little minor gaping in the front. So I posted about how I made these alterations over on my uh, sewing blog, the Peculiar Stitch. So I will link to that below. But I had to do a little um, <laughs> a little surgery to this. There are different ways you can do this, but this seemed like the best option at this point since everything was assembled. Um, I could have put darts in but I decided to take my chances and thankfully it all worked out. So once I angled the zipper and took out that extra fabric in the middle, um, it took care of a lot of the gaping in the front. So I want to say I can pinch out an inch right here. So when I do make this dress again, and I will make this dress again because it was a really fun, easy, quick make. It came together so quickly and easily and yeah, just a really enjoyable pattern overall. But I digress. Anyway, um, the next time I make it, I'm going to pinch out a little bit of fabric in the front neckline and also make those adjustments in the back. Uh, so that worked out really, really nice. Um, and I'm trying to think what else I want to say about this other than I really enjoyed making it and I think you should make one too <laughs> if, if this is your style. Next up, I do have a little bit of a fabric haul to share with you. Uh, if you have been following this YouTube channel for a while now, you know that I am endeavoring to recreate a Victorian gown from the 1840s. A dress from an exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum that I visited about, I want to say, five years ago. Uh, and I've just been so completely in love with this dress and it's my mission to recreate it in some in some shape, form, or capacity. So um, I was able to track down fabric that will work perfectly for this dress, I believe. So that arrived in the mail, and I actually ordered this over a month ago because, because of the whole COVID-19 thing, shipping, uh, especially from fabric.com, shipping is significantly delayed. So this took a, quite a while to get here, but it was so worth it. Um, so let me get that. I will say this fabric was not easy to track down. Uh, the original was made of silk. However, after looking at the, the dress, I feel like I could have gotten away with a, a cotton gauze or a linen, and I hit the jackpot. And I, I stumbled on, I first caught wind of this uh, fabric over on moodfabrics.com. However, they were sold out and they were super pricey. And you know, if it didn't work out, I could there was no way for me to return it because they just don't accept returns. However, uh, on a whim, I went on to fabric.com. Coincidentally, my favorite place to buy fabric from online. Lo and behold, they had it in stock for a much cheaper price with the option to return if it didn't pan out. So I thought that was a complete win and it arrived and it is so perfect. It's here. While it's not silk or identical to the original, uh, it's ac it actually has a little bit of shimmer in it. If you can see that, it's just so, so pretty. So I, I took a little bit of creative liberty with that. Uh, I, I don't mind the, the shimmer to it. I feel like because the original was meant to be a ball gown, this will just add a nice touch of fancy schmanciness to it. So yes, and the other thing is it is linen. So uh, I think it'll have, you know, have a similar, similar drape and a similar feel. It'll be really interesting to work with. And again, uh, it does have a little bit of give to it. I think it has about maybe like a 10%, less than 10% stretch, maybe 5% stretch. But anyway, um, I bought eight yards of it and I also got eight yards of black lining fabric, just a basic solid lawn fabric, which is not as heavy as a quilting cotton. It's very light and airy. So I think that'll drape nicely underneath the, the main fabric. So yay, that arrived. Um, so yeah, eight yards of that. And then this is, yes, eight yards of the, the lawn lining. And then I could not help myself. So I purchased some more linen fabric because I do want to make myself an Edwardian walking skirt. So I picked up uh, some more linen fabric. And this is, according to the website, it's raisin, but it's more like a dark mauve brown, I want to say. But yeah, it's just really, it has a really nice hand to it. And I feel like when I wash it, it's just going to soften up immensely. Um, and because I'm endeavoring to make this historically accurate, I purchased some tarlatan. I want to say tarlatan is like a stiff starched gauze. It's, you know, it comes in different weights. I know there's medium weight and heavy weight. I ordered the medium weight one uh, and you're not supposed to wash it because otherwise the, the starch, the starchiness will just wash out. So you are supposed to 
dry clean it, uh, even though back in Edwardian times they did not have dry cleaners. They generally washed a lot of their outer garments with either vodka or some other, you know, astringent, so to speak. But this is why a lot of people wore chemises and undergarments underneath their main garment, if that makes any sense. But anyway, that was, that was a random stream of historical consciousness. And <laughs> yeah, and all that to say that I'm going to make an Edwardian walking skirt. And and I cannot wait. So yes, while I do have all these grand historical sewing plans, I am actually going to take a little bit of a break from it, only because the weather is heating up and I really do need some some more clothes for warmer weather. So this weekend I am going to whip up or attempt to whip up uh, at least two things for myself. And I was browsing on the foldline.com, which is pretty much the equivalent of Ravelry, but for sewers. Um, it's just a huge database of all the sewing patterns out there, and of course I will link to them below, but I was brow taking a browse through there and stumbled on a few patterns by Fiber Mood, and there is the Mira dress, which fits my modern wardrobe to a T. I mean, it's just like this I want flowy kind of, um, baby doll type of, again, I hate that term, baby doll dress, but it has an umpire waist with some uh, tiers of gathered fabric and some lacy bits, and anyway, completely here for it, so I'm gonna do some stash diving, pick out some fabric for that, and try to whip up one of those for myself. Uh, and then they also have, I don't know how summery this is, but it's their Victoria blouse, uh, which again is very, <laughs> it's like a high necked blouse with puff sleeves, very Edwardian. I don't know why they call it the Victoria blouse, because it's clearly Edwardian era go figure, but I figure that would be a nice addition to a my modern historical history bounding wardrobe. Um, and again, I will post photos of these here so you know what I'm talking about. But I think that is what I'm going to make over the weekend. So stay tuned for that. And last but not least, uh, Dennis and I, this, this kind of, this will transition over into the blather segment where I chat about life stuff, but um, it, it, I feel like it's a nice segue, so I will go with it. Um, Dennis and I actually finished watching Peaky Blinders, uh, all five seasons of it, and oh, you guys, so good. So good. We enjoyed every single episode. I'm so bummed that we may have to wait until 2021 to get season six. Damn you, COVID. Anyway, um, yeah, so to tide myself over, I've decided that I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a Peaky Blinder hat. Yes, I've caught in the Peaky Blinder bug and I'm going to make myself a Kip Page Boy hat. And if I'm feeling extra ambitious, Dennis may get one as well. But a lovely viewer over in the History Mall thread over on Ravelry made one and it is absolutely stunning. I'm so sorry, I'm blanking on your name, but I will pop it in the down bar and uh, link to her project down below because it's, it's brilliant. I mean, I never thought about sewing hats before, but I'm inspired to make one. So I purchased a couple of notions over on Amazon and I'm just waiting for them to get here. The one thing I do need to procure is an old baseball cap because I have to harvest the visor or the, the duck bill visor from it so I can use it for the page boy hat. Anyway, believe it or not, I'm surprised. Uh, Dennis only has like two hats. He has one that he wears a lot and then an older one that he never wears, but the, the duck bill is, it's, it's broken and pretty much unusable. So at some point, if I do need to go out to get something, I may pop over to the dollar store around the corner and see if they have any baseball caps uh, so I can harvest <laughs> the, uh, the duck bill from there. But anyway, I, I did take a peek over on Amazon and on on Etsy and I was not able to track down any locally sourced um, you know, duckbill visors that I can use as an insert for that hat. So anyway, um, I, I will, I will track something down at some point. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. Again, I hope you guys are well, wherever you are, stay safe, stay creative. And if you're new here and you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like and subscribe below. I put out a video every Friday or Saturday for your viewing pleasure. And if you would like to support this channel, as always, you can head on over to my Patreon page. It's the place to be if you would like early access to videos, uh, bonus content, photos, behind the scenes stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun. So definitely hop on over there and check it out. Out. And a huge thank you to all my existing patrons. You guys are amazing, as I mentioned. <sighs> thank you. And until next time, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!